let's uh as we're watching a pretty good match here we're, we're doing a lot of psychology of course because randy savage is going to come out limping here and it's a big part of the match you're leg diving him going after that leg and even when he's just standing in the corner he's selling it and of course we know what the finish is going to be there's going to be a figure four involved and that really works for telling a story um what we're watching here is maybe one of the most infamous matches of your career because I think it's the only time anyone ever told you to go do it over, right? Absolutely. Meltzer would write this after several squash matches had taken place. Flair and Savage were sent to the ring again and did a 25 minute match with Savage selling the injured knee a lot more and Mr. Perfect freely interfering. Razor Ramon came to ringside and gave Savage a hard kick to the knee before walking back to the dressing room. Flair put the figure four on and Savage held on for two minutes before the three count. After the match, Ramon attacked Savage's knee and the ultimate warrior had to help Savage to the back. So clearly we're trying to set up the whole survivor series thing, but the redo of the match less than ideal. Uh, is that the most frustrated you've been as far as a wrestling match? Well, the number one, the crowd didn't give a damn. I mean, we were just were getting no crowd response, and and that happens sometimes when you go on a TV taping and you're later in a show. Mm -hmm. But it just, um, you know, I just think there's probably a little bit too much outside interference there. Does that make sense? Where you're, yes, you know, you know, we we've learned now that you can, you go reach for a guy maybe one time during a match, and um, if you if you if you keep doing it over and over again, the referee doesn't catch it, then the people just go, what the heck. I mean, it's too much. Does that make sense? It does. I, I think the original report about the first version of the match, which we're not looking at here. See, no. like, this this be like the fourth time or fifth time that that Kurt's there. You know, as you, you learn as a manager that if, if you if you're involved so much, it takes away from the match. Yes. And and Kurt wasn't trained to be a manager by any means. He's a great worker, but you know, with Heenan. He needed to stay in one place. Right. Cornette stayed in one place. And if he was involved in something, he moved out of place once or twice. You can't, you know, it's like two guys wrestling one, and like the referee is, you know, just in a bad position. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Melzer would say the first match, actually the match where the title was supposed to change hands, turned into an abortive contest in 12 minutes. And because Vince McMahon was unhappy with what was going on, he sent Bobby Heenan out who signaled to referee Earl Hebner and everyone went to the back dressing room and the ring announcer, Howard Finkel announced quote, the match will resume as soon as the referee regains control. So I'm curious when you come to the back, he didn't and... like all the interference. I got you. You see what I'm saying? It was, it's two against one. Yeah. He was serious about it. But but Kurt was just doing what he thought was I mean, it's nothing Kurt did wrong. It's just one of those situations. I mean, at the end of the night, I just don't think that people cared. And I don't think Randy wanted to lose the belt. <laughs> right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Do you think they didn't care because you weren't um, a, a WWF traditionalist? They didn't have a reason to hate you. You, uh, you weren't this big hulking monster that they were used to seeing in the heel position. No, no, I just, I just don't think he want, what, who wants, who, who, who wants to lose the title belt. You lose, I mean, you're, no, I mean, in terms of the fans, why don't you think it was connecting with the fans? Oh, I don't know. I mean, if I'm a fan and I'm watching this, there's so much outside interference. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the mechanics of the match, it's not that bad, but I, nobody was budging. Kurt's you know, the only one cheering. <laughs> <laughs> it, so is this, uh, obviously this is the more disappointing of the two. You had two WWF title runs. Nothing can compare with the Royal rumble 92, but is there another world title win that you remember disappointing you as much as this one? Cause this should have been a big damn day. Um, well, it was, it was still a big day, but it just, it, it just, you all, you, if you're a guy like me, you want the match to be perfect, and they're right. not all going to be perfect. No pun intended with Kurt there. You just, just you always want you want it to be, you know, at least tech, technically, 
as good as possible. And, you know, we're, we're like we're miscuing with punches and kicks. And, you know, when I'm hitting a guy, they know I'm hitting them. And I don't think I'm not. But, you know, it's like it takes two to tangle. Right. When you come back through the curtain the second time here, Rick, is Vince happy then? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. I don't remember. I, I certainly would remember him not being. He 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 had no problem. And by the way, was I invited? Why wasn't I invited to his birthday party? What in the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he thinks I can be 